You are grooving along with us here on a Tuesday morning. Welcome to The Link, everybody. Jason Salas here. Chris Barnett in studio, as is DJ Joe Sir behind the cameras. Sabrina Salas Matanani, thankfully now out of the quarantine facility in the friendly confines of Tuman Bay. She's back home and joining us remotely via Jigo. And also joining us in the Zoom room is a new friend and someone who I'm sure is a very welcome addition to the hardworking staff at the Guam Memorial Hospital. Their new public administ- public information officer, May Habib. May, half a day and hello to you. Half a day, Buenos Jason, and hello everybody on Guam. Uh, well, congratulations first on, on getting the position, you know, like, and let's just contextualize this a little bit for the viewers. Um, you know, all four of us were talking in this and we're, we're trying to remember when the last time GMH actually had an official PIO was because, you know, Lord knows Lillian's been doing like a million different things there um, as the administrator and CEO and everything like that. Um, but I believe it was maybe six or seven years ago when Connor Murphy last was like, um, you know, kind of like the adjunct spokesperson and everything like that. So um, they're very lucky to have you. And certainly you're going to take a lot of uh, a lot of work off of Lillian's uh, very responsible shoulders. Yes. And, you know, she's the CEO. She's got a lot of priorities. There's a lot going on at GMH, this little thing called COVID that we're still battling, uh, you know, a new GMH coming our way. And so she's got her priorities and I've I've got mine, of course. I think there was no time like the present to bring in a public information officer. Mm. And and of course, you you have a real good pulse for the community, having been a journalist now for like a maybe better part of like a year and a half here on the island and everything like that. Um, so I guess before we go into like all the mechanics of the GMH stuff and everything like that, what drew you to the hospital and what made you want to serve the island as as working with healthcare? You know, that's a really interesting question. Um, obviously, you know, I, you know, I was previously a journalist, and uh, I think I'll always be at heart. And I went on maternity leave, and of course, was looking for like a different kind of flexibility in terms of having a baby and starting a family. And this opportunity came up at GMH and. You know, I just, I think the staff here, even when I was interviewing Lillian, when I was on the other side of the camera, uh, they're just so hardworking and they just kept going. And there were so many great stories at GMH that were not told that I'd honestly find out about by fluke. You know, and I'm like, there's so much goodness that's coming out of there. It's just the, the rigmarole of the everyday that sort of pushes aside these wonderful stories and these real life people that are showing up every single day. And during the height of COVID, these doctors and these nurses and these environmental staff and these facilities management staff showed up every single day, no matter what it meant um, as a risk to them. And I was like, how could I not want to be a part of that? You know, how mm-hmm. I just got here, but I, the stories out of GMH, I, I really can't wait to tell the, the real stories of GMH. Well, fantastic. Well, you know, and if, if I can uh, be so bold and everything like that, we are going to need your A game every single day, considering, you know, these are very, very <laughs> tense times. And, you know, like your, the agency you're with now is probably one of the most critical uh, in the government. So, you know, it's good, good to be working with you and congratulations on getting there. Thank you very much, Jason. And you just call me anytime and I'll be here. Oh, fantastic. And we, and we appreciate the accessibility. So that having been said, if we can go ahead and uh, get into, uh, you know, some of the numbers and everything like that. Um, can you give us an update on what, you know, the, the current COVID census is? Because, you know, um, in the past couple of weeks, you know, we had those uh, clusters stemming from the basketball game and then the well-chronicled Tsubaki Tower thing. Um, officials have said, you know, um, when the hospitalizations get up into the double digits and once it hits 10 sustained, uh, that's cause for concern, and that's when some um, decisions are going to have to be made. They've been like as high as seven. Um, so where are they right now? Um, at GMH, we've got four uh, COVID patients, one that's in the ICU, two that are in the ICU actually, but one more stable, and one in our med surge and one in our um, telemetry unit. So we've got four total, and it's been kind of hovering around four or five here at GMH for the past at least two weeks. Okay, outstanding. Um, and it it also is hospital week and everything, and kind of like you know, fittingly so as you know, um, we went through a very very rough fall season, and then you know, things fortunately got better and everything. This actually gives the staff there a chance to to exhibit you know the services and the commitment that you guys all have to the community, but also for the community to kind of like you know openly thank you and give back. Um, how is hospital week? What was the preparation like? And you know what are what are things there? Because I know for a fact when my dad was in the hospital. The GMH Hospital Week had like the most insane fiesta tables. Yes. They went big. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I still haven't, I've been here basically the entire time COVID has been on Guam. So I haven't really truly experienced the fiesta, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, but, you know, I, 
I just got here last week and I will say we had a committee uh, for National Hospital Week that put together as much virtual games as possible. I've heard previously that GRMC and Naval Hospital and, um, you know, of course, GMH would get together and they'd have like these fun, friendly competitions for National Hospital Week. Obviously, we're living in a different time and COVID is very much a reality right now, um, but we're still trying to enjoy it as much as we can. Last year, it was kind of kiboshed because really we were in the thick of COVID during this time. Um, but this year, the hospital committee, you know, they, they, we had opening ceremonies yesterday. People were recognized. Every day is like a theme day. I don't know if you can see, but I'm wearing a Guam Memorial Hospital Authority National Hospital oh, nice. t-shirt. So everybody, yeah, everybody at GMH is like painted green today because we're all wearing these t-shirts in unity. Um, yesterday was like twin days. And then there's these online raffles and Jeopardy games to really get people going. I think, you know, ultimately good morale and good um, teamwork means excellent healthcare delivery, you know, and we've got the staff and we've got the excellent medical, clinical and behind the scenes people working here and keeping that morale high and people engaged and thanking them, like you said, for their work goes a long way. Mm. I'm, I'm going to ask you, uh, May, if you can, maybe just uh, pedal back to your pre your previous work as a reporter and everything and as, as the new girl on staff and everything like that, <laughs> um, not as a member of the team, but like walking into the environment that you're in right now and considering what you know the nurses um the the physicians you know the administration and everything everything that that agency had been through with um you know such hard times last uh last fall if not last year in, in its entirety uh, what do you get for a sense of of the morale there of the of the esprit de corps if, if you will you know it's really interesting um you say that jason i or ask that i when i came in here the first thing I noticed is how happy and, and like positive people are. And, you know, I was expecting sort of like, man, we've been in this fight for a year. It's been a, a long time. And yes, absolutely. People are tired and they want the community to, you know, get vaccinated and still be cautious. The fight is not over for COVID. So definitely there's still sentiments of we're still in this fight. You know, the game's not over. Um, but I will say that people are positive and people are hopeful for a better tomorrow. I think, um, you know, I think there will always be a need for more, more. We need, you know, more equipment, more nurses, more everything. But I think generally what we have and who we have within the walls of this hospital, they're just doing their best every single day and they show up ready to fight and keep fighting. I love how you use that word like the fight because we've heard that, you know, through um, through numerous interviews that we did, um, not just the GMH, but people in healthcare, And they're like, you know, this is why we signed up to do this. This is why we chose this profession. And, you know, we're going to have to, you know, join in the fight and keep fighting. And and on that note, um, Lillian obviously has uh, like a pretty big job today when the meeting happens at 2.30 down to add a loop for the spending plan and everything like that. So have you any um, insight to give on, you know, on how he, she is going to fight? Uh, for the money from the American Recovery Plan and how the like, GMH will be able to use to avail from potentially, you know, as we've heard, 200 million, potentially 330 million to be used for the hospital and possibly a new hospital. You know, I think ultimately the spending um, is at the discretion of the governor's office, and we we really do respect that. I think the governor has made it really clear that she wants a, a big chunk of that money to be allocated to a new GMH. And the reality is we're going to need that money to get there. The governor made it very public yesterday during, you know, her proclamation signing for National Hospital Week that she wants shovels on the ground, groundbreaking by late 2022. And, and to get there, of course, you need the money to get there. So in terms of that big discretion, I mean, we're GMH. Of course, we're going to support any money that comes our way for a new hospital. Um, the only real ask that we've made in terms of that spending is a $12 million ask uh, from the ARP, and that went straight to the governor's office. And $10 million of that would be making up for, uh, you know, lost revenues from last year. I think everybody knows the OPA report came out, which we submitted all the information for. There was a $10 million uh, loss for GMH last year because... COVID's expensive. The expenses went up. The revenues went down from elective surgeries um, and, and, and much more. And so $10 million would be for that. And then $2 million uh, in relation to salvaging and uh, demolishing Z-Wing. Z-Wing. Z-Wing? Z-Wing. Um, you know, the Canadian Z, I'm sorry. But uh, the, the Z-Wing. The American is a Z. Well, the well you can say for, for, so, you know, with, the, with the numbers not to nine. And, and I'd, I'd understand what you're talking about. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's really like in terms of skin in the game, that's that was our ask is the 12 million dollars. Absolutely, we will support any major part of that funding that will come our way for a new GMH. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems like, I mean, these are real um, remarkable times because all 15 senators um, are of the same mind in how they want to approach this meeting today. Like all 15 of them are going to all be present. They all signed off on the letter, which is, you know, like a remarkable achievement in and of itself. And of course, from the administration side, uh, you know, like the cabinets all got their plans and they've all kind of, you know, had to like give and take about how the money's going to be spent. If it gets down to negotiations and, you know, you have to kind of like alter your plan and everything like that, I would say you guys probably have a bigger bar bartering chip with the state of the world being what it is today um, than most. So, you know, has, has Lillian even indicated, you know, if the numbers start to like, if they start to do like a, a game of give and take and everything, I I'm sure she's not going to budge. You know, I, again, ultimately, the, it, it is the governor's discretion. So I feel like the back and forth really is between the governor and the senators who are trying to have their say in where the priorities should be. And every, you know, people have different opinions in the community as well. People think that all of the money should be going directly to people and, and be given to the hands of people for today. But I think we know that GMH is old. It is no secret. This is an over 50-year-old building. We need a new GMH for good healthcare delivery for for modernized healthcare delivery what we deliver here at GMH is fantastic but the way i compare it is we've got formula 1 drivers in a 1983 toyota corolla you know <laughs> we want to give those people the infrastructure the modern infrastructure that also means modern building codes this is a really really old building mm -hmm. and so I don't, you know, I think the priority is really clear in terms of needing a new GMH. Absolutely, there's a big ticket in terms of the dollar sign that goes with that. I don't, again, no secret, the Army Corps report made it really public, but they too were supportive of building a whole new GMH. That is the best way to use our resources. It's most cost efficient. It's the best way to get building codes is to start from scratch. So, um, you know, of, of course, we're going to support anything that brings money our way for a new GMH. Okay, excellent. Well, I want to shift from maybe like, you know, kind of the obligatory political side to maybe now the operational is for um, people that are listening like that and they want to avail of GMH's services. Um, have, have there been any changes operationally to the, uh, to the visiting hours? I know that, that was kind of like up in the air and it changed a few times in the last few months. We're still, yeah, we're still, the visitation is still limited, I believe. I'm going to confirm that but we're still limited in our visitation elective surgeries however have gone back in full force of course there's like a big backlog of elective surgery mm -hmm. so that's what they're working to get through now um but visitation is still limited okay are there any um any types of services that gmh provided uh previously that have opened up since last i was gonna say since last we spoke but like uh, since uh the last time we had lillian on so again, elective surgeries are, are back. Um, I know rehabilitation in-house has also come out. Outpatient rehabilitation, I believe, has moved to the SNU, and I think it might be staying there. And so, of course, I mean, GMH has learned a lot in terms of its own operations through COVID, what works best, what is best left off site, what's best in-house. I will say that there was a lot of shifting of human resources within the hospital to accommodate COVID. You know, in the height of COVID, when we had dozens of people here, the whole hospital had to be shifted. So people moved, you know, people, the gift shop was shut down so that mm -hmm. we it could be used for non-COVID patients so that COVID patients can have isolated rooms and proper, um, you know, negative air pressure rooms. So um, the, the operation itself is getting back to it. Almost all the units are actually back in their home spaces, which makes them very happy, of course. It's like you being in your own home after traveling for a long time. You're like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to go home. I'm ready to know where all my cups and all my plates are. Sabrina and, you know, where can I completely might... empathize with that, having, having yes. just been through quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You're just like happy to get there. Um and yeah and and that's it so everybody's getting back to normal operations and everybody's moving back to their own homes it's it's been a slow and steady progress i think that's also a positive reflection of how much gmh has actually changed itself to accommodate COVID patients should there be god forbid an influx again we're ready you know we've got the rooms ready we've got everything ready and we have the playbook now Okay, so uh, fi final question. Um, I know this has come up maybe once or twice in the last year, but you know, like, um, 
especially when things were at their worst, like manpower is always going to be like an issue. Um, there were nurses brought in from the States who were here to, on temporary contracts and they had glowing reviews to say about like GMH's entire staff, their dedication, you know, their attitude, you know, the, the don't quit um, uh, motif that they all shared and everything like that. Um, as far as career opportunities and everything, I know uh, Chris brought this up maybe once or twice. If people are considering, you know, getting into healthcare and they want to work at GMH and they want to serve the island and everything like that, are we back up to a point of, of maybe normal hiring at this point? Yeah, you know, I think that there is always, um, I think that there's an, always a need for healthcare, I think, or healthcare workers, of course, frontline and behind the scenes. Definitely nurses. We still actually have traveling nurses, Jason, like you talked about, way less than when we had during the height of the pandemic, like you mentioned, and there was a, a true need then, and there's still a true need now as we, of course, transition back to normal operations with less COVID uh, in the community and less of a COVID census within the hospital. Hospital. Um, we are always looking for great healthcare staff. I think nurses are, we, UOG generates the most wonderful nurses and they are often poached off island and it is our mission to keep them here and keep our homegrown talents. So yes, any of the graduating nurses, we're happy to um, have you here. Just give us a call. And, you know, of course, there's always room for doctors and medical staff and I think anybody who's who's willing should be applying. All right. Well, very well said. Well, May, let me say again, congratulations. Happy, happy belated Mother's Day to you. And, um, you know, we've we've appreciated and admired your work as a fellow journalist and as a colleague and everything like that. And, and obviously you bring the positive energy, um, you know, and the enthusiasm into the mm -hmm. job. But, you know, you're on a team of rock stars over there. We really believe it. I know? believe it. Absolutely. These are these are heroes. I can't say this enough, honestly. Like hospital week doesn't even isn't enough to thank everybody that's working here, really. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, for the for the few moments of uh, of peace and quiet that you guys do get there, and I know they're few and far between and everything like that. We hope um, that your team at GMH like sincerely appreciates or is receptive of the appreciation that we the community have for you. So um, congratulations once again and thanks. And we look forward to working with you. Thanks, Jason. Talk to you soon. Call me anytime. All right. Thanks so much. That's Maya B, the new public information officer at the Guam Memorial Hospital. Going to do good things over there. And we are going to return to work when the link continues right after this. Looking for QAM's multi-platform morning show, The Link, just got a little more delicious with Feed Me Fridays. Chris, Sabrina, Jason, and the rest of the morning crew will take some time.